Today is day three of seven on the Arizona Peace Trail. If you are new to our channel and enjoy off-road adventures, then you've come to the right place. In our previous two videos, you followed us as we've traveled from Parker through Havasu, Bullhead City, and Kingman to the Wallapai Mountains. Today, we are anticipating about 113 miles as we descend south 6,000 feet from the Wallapai Mountains through Wikiup for fuel to our next campsite just north of Alamo Lake. If everything goes according to plan, We'll be stopping at some interesting destinations along the way called Spurs while we continue documenting our adventure. If you're not familiar with our channel, Off-Road Destinations, my name is Darren and with me is my dad, Kirk. We've now traveled just about 300 miles and are about a quarter way through our one week off-road trip. If you enjoy off-road adventures with some fun facts along the way, then buckle up because we're on day three of the Arizona Peace Trail and we're bringing you along for the ride. We just left Wallapai Lodge, and let me tell you, that is a place to stay. It was very quaint. Their little restaurant was delicious. Service and staff were friendly. Hotel rooms just top-notch clean. Nothing negative to say about it. It was an excellent stay. So if you are staying in hotels and are looking for a place to stay in the Wallapai Mountains, definitely hit up the Wallapai Lodge. We are now going through the backwoods of the Wallapai Mountains on these dirt roads. Very scenic views and our next spur that we're looking for here is going to be the Gold King Mansion. Definitely when you get into shade like this, this is where uh, the roads can get a little muddy. On the bright side, uh, there's no dust in the Wallapais. Currently we're rolling in 6,500 feet of elevation and although we stayed in the Wallapai Lodge last night, we do intend on tent camping tonight. So it is vitally important that we descend today and get into lower elevation. You can obviously see with all the snow here, it is pretty frigid up here. Still beautiful for March, but not the type of weather we would want to tent camp in tonight. What a great view. This is not an edge you would want to fall off. Are you okay back there, Kirk? I am. You're going a bit faster than I, I want to go. There you go. And of course, trying to take in a little bit of this beautiful view out here, which is awesome. Just up here just a little bit is the Gold King Mansion to the left. Should be right around the corner here. Copy that. So is this the only way in and the only way out, or is there another road? No, you can get to it from the normal highway. Oh, okay. That's where it's going to be visited from by a lot of people from the normal highway. This way here would be a little bit treacherous. Yeah, this is a little, uh, little narrow, rocky, looks like a creek bed almost. This is an adventure all by itself going to this Gold King Mansion. vehicle back here. That was a gnarly little drop off. I was expecting to scrape on it and I didn't. I am going to go ahead and put mine in uh, low just for this because it's a little sticky. Yeah, that was a nasty boulder. Well, that's pretty gnarly, man. Have you scraped on any rocks? Negative. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Woo! That gets your heart racing. It looks like we should be getting close. Welcome to the Gold King Mansion. It's the middle of nowhere. That is awesome. Look at that. We're going to get out and take a look at it. The Gold King Mansion from the Arizona Peace Trail, that trail is not for the faint of heart. Um, we do intend on going back up the same way we came. However, uh, be advised, um, if it's snowing, I don't know if that's doable. You know, if there's snow on that trail, if you have a van, if you have even a stock vehicle, four by four even, not gonna be doable. Pretty much have to have a side by side with some sort of ground clearance. But anyways, now that we're here to the Gold King Mansion, let's go check this place out. It's like, how did they get all this cement up here, you know? I'm assuming it wasn't on that trail we were just on. No. <laughs> and probably the trail has just got worse and worse over time. Yeah. Well, I think the guy built it for his wife so that 
try to entice her to come up here with all the modern amenities. Well, then he spent too much time on it because it didn't work <laughs> out. Yep. Shortly after gold was discovered out here in 1929, this structure was built a year later in 1930. The mansion was supposed to be the first of a series to accommodate miners with a modern bathroom and electric lights. However, in 1933, a local rancher visited the mine and reported the mansion was not being used as originally intended. He claimed the owners would take prospective stock buyers up there to party. In truth, the mine was not nearly as successful as it was projected, and in 1933, mining was stopped. You ready to get back on the trail? Let's do it. So where we're headed now, we're, going, we're headed back on this Gold King Mansion uh, road in which we came from. And I'll say, I'm normally really confident, maybe even overly confident in, uh, in trails. This one, this one has me a little worried. I, you know, I know we can probably get through it, but uh, there's no doubt, I think it's gonna be challenging for us. Yeah, and as we're approaching this rock section here, uh, <laughs> yeah, hold. All right, this is gnar. Yeah, this is this is gnarly, Dad. This is pretty gnarly. Just just spot me the best that you can if you can. All right, guys. All right, guys. Let's go. Give me a little bit of confidence for the morning. Careful not to talk with your mirror on the right on that one. Let me know if you need me to get out. Atta boy, atta boy. Oh my gosh. This is nuts. It was a little different going down than it was going up. Yeah, that was a pretty gnarly section down there. Do not attempt that unless you uh, have confidence in your off-road uh, skills. back on the Arizona Peace Trail. Awesome. Sometimes guys, when I come over these hillsides and I just see these kinds of views, it's just obviously very gorgeous. You know, you really start reflecting again and it's like, dang, how lucky am I to be on the Arizona Peace Trail, day three with my pops. And we've had things go wrong, but we figured it out together and ultimately uh, that's what counts when you off-road. If everything goes perfect, guys, it's not a true off-road adventure. Everybody knows that. Next up, we are looking for the survivor's camp. That'll be our next spur. I don't know exactly what it is. I have a very uh, basic understanding that it might be some sort of place that wilderness campers go to uh, to test out their skill sets and improve their uh, surviving capabilities up here in the mountains. Oh man, yep, this is crazy again. This is crazy again, all right. <laughs> Gotta trust your brakes. <laughs> This will be a fun climb out. As my rule of thumb, if there's other tracks out there, then we can do it too. Something else to note if you're doing the Peace Trail, beware there will be desert stripes, i.e. scratches in your paint on your vehicle. There is no getting around it. I see structures. Survivalist can. Wow, this is interesting. We just got to uh, the survivalist campsite, and there's a bunch of uh, random water tanks, windmill. We got like a pin for cattle or something. But we're just gonna walk around and check it out real quick. We won't spend too much time because we're gonna continue on the trail to, uh, to to the next destination. But let's take a look. Here, open that. Let's see okay, what's in there. On. Oh. Oh, okay. So we got like feed. Watch out for critters. It's, it almost looks like they're someone's still uh, semi using this. Yeah. And I just stepped in a big pile of poop. So hidden, hidden away in the, some trees that were close by. Yeah, it looks like there's a creepy old abandoned house. Let's go inside and take a look. I have a theory that maybe the survivalist camp was a uh, some sort of neighborhood commune. And maybe it turned into a survival camp, and maybe these were just legitimate homes that were here. Yeah. Hello? Somebody, uh... Yeah, somebody lives here, or lived here. There's no windows in the... 
in the window frames. Yeah. I would say a survival camp is something that probably could be skipped. It's not it's not the best of the spur, but it is something that if you're into uh, just exploring abandoned places, this might be a, a good spur for just you. Just watch your step. Stand on the part with the nails because they're right. Yeah. And on top of that, if you have any kind of kids, this is probably a really unsafe place to be. I found my piece of uh, yeah, you found right your there. piece. There we go. All right. Here, just give me a piece of PVC then. There's one. There's one. This place is just so littered with trash that yeah. I don't I don't think that's going to make a huge difference. But no. we'll, we committed to it. So. Yep. All right. We just checked out the survivalist camp, and now we're heading back down the road even further. We're looking for petroglyphs on this next spur. It should just be down the same road. And my hope is that it's a little bit better than the uh, survivalist camp. Maybe a little bit interesting, but it's all about the uh, the journey, not necessarily the destinations. You see some rocks up ahead, like some cliff faces. That's the prime area where you get petroglyphs. So I'm thinking this is where the petroglyphs are going to be. Let's find out. So I I see them, Dad, but I don't know oh. if we can get to them. You see them up there? Yeah, I do. Right there. Can you zoom in? There's some there. There's some over here. It is. How did they get so far up there? So from what we can tell, we only see uh, one set of petroglyphs up there on that rock. It, it's impossible to get to. Plus, there's a, a fence here. We don't want to break the rules, so we gotta take take a, a look at it from afar. But yeah, this is what to expect if you head down to the petroglyphs. This is gonna be fun. Uh, <laughs> crawling back out of this, and once again, we gotta crawl back out the way we came. This road is not recommended again for anybody but high ground clearance vehicles. Yeah, climbing out of this is no joke. Full concentration. Oh man, yeah, the stakes are real too when you look off to the right. Do not attempt this if it's snowing out, guys. If there is snow or it's snowing, this is far too dangerous. When in doubt, gas it. I would say the biggest challenge on this particular uh, spur is the off camber. I, I felt a little bit uncomfortable in a couple spots being so much off camber. Yeah, I would agree. Definitely something to be aware of if you're very top heavy as well. All right, we are back on the peace trail after uh, knocking out the spur of the survival camp and the petroglyphs. And our next spur that's going to be coming up should be the Boreana Mine. Be sure to take your time with these roads, guys. It's just a, literally a sheer drop off everywhere you go in these Wallapai Mountains. The Boreana Mine operated from 1915 to 1980 as the Yucca Tungsten Mine which produced tungsten to support World War I. In 1918, towards the end of World War I, it was one of Arizona's leading tungsten producers. It continued to grow and from 1933 to 1937, it was the leading producer in Arizona and probably the second largest producer in the United States. However, in 1937, it was consumed by fire and had to be rebuilt. By 1942, production had dwindled from 150 tons per day to about 40 tons per day. And after the end of World War II in 1945, it succumbed to age and was decommissioned. For reference, tungsten is an essential raw material for the manufacture of armored vehicles, anti-tank warheads, and explosive grenades. Well, that was cool, the Boreana mine. But there's something that I think is a little bit cooler even. Just up the hill, there should be a goldfish pond with some wild goldfish. So let's go check that out. The Boreana mine was so long and deep that it eventually was no longer feasible to pump dry and it was abandoned. From there, the mine filled with water and the constant overflow now runs out of the mouth and forms a small year-round pond. At some time after the closure, goldfish were dumped into the little pond and they have survived and reproduced ever since. Do we, have, do we actually have goldfish or what? Oh, check this out. This is so awesome. Look at these orange goldfish, man. There's a bunch over there, a <laughs> bunch think I, over there. I don't think I've ever seen wild goldfish before. Ah, I know I haven't. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is That's just pretty amazing. This is in the middle of nowhere. This is kind of ridiculous to be yeah. honest. There's a there's a one that's not orange. I don't know what. <laughs> Definitely cool to see those goldfish. I also noticed, check this out. Look at my dad's bumper beer. 
Oh, that thing is nasty. That's gross. That's that's in that big puddle that I went around the corner and just <laughs> splashed everywhere. Yeah, as a reminder, we're going to be drinking our bumper beers at the end of the seven day peace trail. <laughs> Mine's looking good. There is a there is a strategy to keep the bumper beer horizontal and not vertical. <laughs> yeah, I think that strategy was just a, it just worked out. <laughs> Wasn't anything planned. All right, Dad, you ready to continue down the peace trail? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Uh, I'm starting to see our first Saguaro cactuses. That's cool. That means we've descended uh, quite a bit. We're about 4,000 feet of elevation still. We're definitely looking to uh, descend as quick as we can now, just to ensure that when we tent camp, we're not going to be in too cold of climate. Cactus in the road here. We're going to have to go around. Oh, wow, yeah, definitely. you got to wonder how that got in the road. Yeah, that is kind of odd, right in the middle of both sides of the road. Slow down on the corner so you don't nail that cactus. Yeah, that's a big boy. I see a bunch of cactus around. Don't want to pop one because I didn't bring a spare. I'm going to rely on my dad if I need one, but hopefully I don't. Hopefully people can use our video as a little bit of insight on what to expect when they do the Arizona Peace Trail and makes it safer for everybody too. Also guys, if you have any questions regarding the Peace Trail for any video, just leave it in the comment section below and we'll definitely uh, do our best to answer them. Our goal here is to make awareness of this awesome trail. It's to uh, encourage donations to the Peace Trail, which I will always post in the description on how to donate. We don't want any money. We don't make any money. We have our day jobs. This is just a father-son hobby, but if we can bring good to uh, all the places that we all enjoy off-roading, the way we see it, there's two main ways to do that. You can either donate financially if you're uh, in, in a place to do so, or alternatively, you know, you can try to pick up trash wherever you go. I would definitely challenge all the clubs out there, anybody that's solo out there, if you guys can pick up trash, one piece for any place you stop at is all that it takes, and we will have no trash in this desert. It's just that easy. This is a working ranch. We're going to be slowing down for some workers and some horses up here. Okay, I'll slow it down. There's a pickup up there. Yeah, he's blocking our way. Yeah, that's crazy. We're going to have to backtrack. I don't see anybody here. Oh boy, okay, we're going to have to figure out how to turn around. This is a pretty narrow, uh, narrow spot. Huh. That was annoying that he was blocking the way, though. Yeah, that is very annoying. Maybe he was blocking it on purpose. They should have been blocking the other side. That was just more dangerous if you couldn't get by. Yeah, true. Well, this is definitely one rocky trail. Yeah, it really, really is. So are we actually still on the Arizona Peace Trail, or are we on an offshoot to go to Wikia? We're still on the Arizona Peace Trail. Wow. These kind of miles are hard miles. Yeah, these are about the hardest you can get. There's absolutely no making up time on a trail like this. To be honest, when we got down in that valley, I kind of thought we were out of the wall of High Mountain. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, too. How far do you think the cutoff is for Wikia? I'm going to estimate 10 to 12 more miles of this. No way. We got out of the wall of High Mountain. The trail was, uh, let's just put it this way. We misjudged how slow of a pace the wall of High Mountain would be. So be advised if you do the Arizona Peace Trail, definitely uh, have plenty of time in the Wallapies because it's a lot of slow rock climbing. It's nice, we're on this flat, open trail right now, and uh, we're able to relax a little bit. But with the sun setting, we're for sure going to be setting up our tents at night. That was unexpected, but at the end of the day, we got out of it, and we're going to be closing down uh, day three on the Arizona Peace Trail. Uh, we did get to our campsite. We are going to be tent camping it tonight. It is already after dark hopefully uh you guys can see us here on the video but that concludes our day three of the arizona peace trail we look forward to day four tomorrow we have a lot more stuff planned uh tomorrow will be our official halfway point so be sure to like and subscribe hit the bell notification if you want to be notified when uh when the video for day four comes out so there's one thing that always stands the test of time and that's rock and concrete yep i hit my freaking 
brush guard, huge. I actually didn't know if I had a bumper beer left. I hit it so good. So what do you? What did you see over here? You called me over here. Yeah, it's a it's it's a neat cave, and it looks like somebody's made something out of it. So you guys you guys have to step up your game. You have to be here to support the off roaders, or else people aren't going to rely on you guys. 